All right, this is the best personality quiz prompt for ChatGPT. I have run this about a thousand times so far. It's accurate roughly 50% of the time, which is pretty freaking good for a prompt. And if it doesn't work, you just run it again. So it's not really a big deal. Um, I've also helped probably about a hundred customers so far build quizzes that are written in their voice using this prompt. That's one of the big advantages of doing this prompt and this setup is that it writes in your style and your voice and AI can put stuff out. It can make a personality quiz. If you just ask it, make a personality quiz about whatever topic it's going to make one, but it's going to sound like chat GPT. And that's not what you want. What you really wanted to do is to make your job easier. You wanted to make your job of making a personality quiz to generate leads, recommend your products easy. And so that's what this prompt is meant to do. I'm going to walk through the exact steps to follow to fill in the prompt with your own stuff so that it speaks in your voice. And then we'll look at an output quiz from building this. Now, it's a little intimidating at first, but let me just break it down. Um, this prompt starts once you have a quiz idea. So once you have a personality quiz idea, that's where you jump into this. There's a separate video, separate prompt for getting quiz ideas from your site or for your business, depending on what you do, that's easy enough. Once you pick one that you like, that's where we begin with this prompt. So I say, I want to make a quiz titled, what is your biggest strength that will help people learn more about their best attributes so that they can use it in their life to better themselves. Now, what's custom here is the quiz title and then what I want the quiz to do. Now, this is also where you could say, I wanted to recommend my products. I wanted to recommend my services, my coaching programs, my courses. That's so those are really common things that people will do with these results based on working with, like I said, a bunch of clients over the last few weeks. Now, I also have an example question in here. This is where you'll be able to inject your own voice. You can leave my example question in here, and then you'll be using my voice, which is totally fine if you would like to do that. I can call it josh.ai or whatever you want to call it. Um, that's that's all good. Or you can write your own. And the, what you're doing here is you're teaching AI. This is how I write my questions. Everybody asks questions in a different way. That's what makes you unique. Every person is different. You don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. You can leave this in here as is, or you can just let the AI do its thing. It's pretty good. But again, it's going to be the AI's voice, not your voice. So in order to inject your own voice, you just write one question. It doesn't necessarily have to be related to the quiz, although it's better if it is. So I just say in your friend group, which role do you play? I'm the glue. I'm the supporter. I'm the consistent one. I just wrote it how I would talk, like how I would say this or how I would answer this question if somebody was to ask me. So that's the first element of this. After you get your title, what you want the quiz to do, then a example question. Now we go down to the outcomes. Now, this is really where there are two paths that diverge. One, you know exactly what you are, want your outcomes to be. And I've worked with a number of clients already who are in this place. If you know exactly what your outcomes to be, write them down. Write them down in this format where it's the title, your biggest strength is being supportive, and then a description. Whoops, I just messed that up. There we go, undo. Um, and then a description that includes what this outcome is, what type of person gets this outcome, why you got this outcome, and then specifics around what this outcome is. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can write the outcomes as they are in the quiz. So you can write it verbatim what you want someone to see at the end of the quiz. Or you can just write a list of attributes about this type of person, this outcome. So instead of this being an example outcome, <clears throat> oh, sorry, this is actually another element that I did, but um, instead of it being resilience, resilience is the ability to bounce back, right? Instead of it being a description here, you could just write a list of bullet points that's what this outcome is about. Really, if you know if you know what you want to tell people at the end, especially if you want specific courses 
coaching programs or products to be included in the outcome, write those yourself. Those descriptions are somewhere between 100 and 150 words along with the outcome title. Highly, highly, highly recommend doing that before you run this prompt because if you run it with a generic set of outcomes and then you realize you want to change it, you have to start over again. So if you know that's what you want, do it now. I just want to make that really clear because I've been working with a bunch of clients where we get halfway in and we we run a first version of this and they're like, oh, actually, I know exactly what my I want my outcomes to be. And that's okay too. If you need to see it once, you can run this through, see what it puts out for you and then be like, oh, actually, I don't want it to tell people this or that or the other thing. I don't want to include this outcome or that outcome. That's fine. That's fine. You can run it multiple times. I just think if you do know already, this is what I want to show in my outcomes, just do that first. It will save you time. So that's one way of doing it. Now, let me scroll back up because I realize I actually included another part in this prompt, <clears throat> which again, you can leave as is or write your own. So this is me writing an example outcome. So I wrote your biggest strength is being supportive, contrary to what might immediately come to mind, blah, blah, blah. This is my voice. This is how I talk. This is how I write. Now, this, this example outcome and the example question above, this is teaching the AI, this is how I talk. This is how I write. Now, I realize that's basically asking you to write part of a quiz. It is. And so, again, you don't have to do it. You can leave it blank. You know, you can remove these elements from the prompt or you can leave mine in here because then it will speak in my voice. And I've written several thousand quizzes. My voice is pretty much on par with like the best of what a quiz is. So you can leave it in here. That's available when you load this prompt in from the link that's in the description uh, to actually load this into the playground. Also, I'm using the playground, but you can run this in chat GPT. I just like this interface better. Okay, so I wrote one outcome. Then I have the list of all the outcomes for this quiz. And there are 10 because I'm doing what's your biggest strength and I want 10 strengths to be included. I want this to be a really accurate quiz. I want this to actually be helpful to people to know, oh, my biggest strength is creativity. What can I do with that? Interesting, right? So I didn't write all these because I don't know. Like I'm not an expert in you know, telling people what their biggest strength is. And so what I did was I used Poe, and here's my output from Poe. I said, give me a list of human strengths, and I said, expand on those strengths. And then it gave me a list of 10. I used Poe using the Sage model. Uh, there's a bunch of models in Poe, and they're continually adding models, so I'll keep testing them, and I'll let you know if there's a better one than Sage. So far, Sage has worked the best for me. I like Poe because has more data than OpenAI ChatGPT. And so it gives better outcomes if you're starting from uh, scratch, like you don't know exactly what you want the outcomes to be. So that's what I did there. So I have all the outcomes. They're in these brackets. Um, you'll notice I'm using these brackets. I don't even know what this is called. These greater than, less than signs. This is just stolen from HTML code. It's just to separate out the elements so like my example outcome is within a bracket just so the AI does not get confused. That's my main goal with everything at this point. Um, now I just said now create a quiz in the following example quiz format. And then I have the example quiz below. We've optimized the heck out of this um, just a lot. <laughs> like we've really optimized this uh, because it's it's the best way to do it. Oh, and it looks like I need to reload this back in because here it is. So this is the example quiz format. It just, it's set up to give the quiz in a format that the AI understands and also that humans can understand. Not much to do here other than when you go down to this section that says quiz questions, you can just uh, control F it or Apple F it or command F it, whatever, uh, search for it. Um, it says include seven questions with six answer choices per question. That's like my recommendation for a really thorough quiz that has more than five results, more than five outcomes. 
seven questions with six answer choices. I like it for two reasons. Uh, it gives enough questions to really get enough data to make it an accurate quiz. And it puts it in a nice grid so that you can use image answers, which I'll show you inside of the builder once we start building this. Uh, it just looks a really nice format. So seven and six, uh, another common pairing is six and three, six questions, three answer choices. Uh, you can go five and five. That's another common pairing. Whatever works for you, I would say however many outcomes you have, so if you have three outcomes, you want six times as many answer choices. So if you have three outcomes, then you want six questions with three answer choices. Or you could go, let's see, three questions with six answer choices. That would be kind of a weird quiz. It'd be really short. I don't recommend going below five questions for a quiz. It doesn't feel like it's accurate. So you just want enough answer choices, six times more answer choices than outcomes. So five and five, five questions with five answer choices, that's 25 answer choices total. So that would work for a quiz that has four or five outcomes. Now seven and six, right? That's 42. And it's not a perfect science, right? Like this, I have six questions with six outcomes. So that's only 36 possible answer choices. And I have 10, 10 outcomes in this quiz, but I think it's accurate enough and you can kind of gauge that in the next step. That was a tangent on scoring. If you're not wanting to go down the rabbit hole with scoring, you can just use this as is because it's a computer, because it's an AI, it actually does scoring the best because it knows exactly how to make the quiz accurate. It saves you a ton of time because scoring is actually the most difficult thing out of all this stuff. Um, so anyways, that's a little diatribe about quiz scoring. If you want another nugget there, you basically want every outcome to have an equal number of uh, correlations to it because the way personality quiz scoring works is every answer choice gives a point to one or more of the outcomes. And you want every outcome to have an equal number of points correlated to it so that all else being equal, it is an equal chance of getting each outcome if you're taking the quiz and then it becomes accurate. So that's, that's a little thing there. Um, okay. That's the questions and the answer choices. The outcomes should just pick up on how many outcomes you included in your prompt. If it doesn't, then sometimes you'll need to go down here to outcomes and force the number of outcomes and just say include seven outcomes, whatever. Okay. So that's that. Uh, I'm going to submit that and run it. It works pretty great. Like I said, 50% accurate this time. Yeah, it's messing up a little bit because it's not doing my scoring right. So I would just run this again. The scoring is the most common thing to fail on this. So just run it again until it does it right. I don't know why it doesn't do it right sometimes. It just doesn't. So let's see if it gets it right this time. There we go. Answer choice A gives 0.2. All right, so now it worked. Whatever, I don't know why. I'm going to just let that run because it's going to build out. Now, I've already got this in my Interact account, obviously. I copied and pasted it over. Um, if you want us to do that for you and or build the prompt for you and or <laughs> make the whole quiz for you, you can go to ai.tryinteract.com. We are building automation so that all of this happens in the background. There's things we're waiting on, like different APIs to be available uh, from places like Poe and different formats to come online. So in the meantime, we are using human assistance. And the, the reality here, right, is like there's always going to be human assistance with AI stuff. That's just how it's going to work, in my opinion. And so you can go to ai.tryinteract.com, just put in your website, any quiz ideas that you have, we'll walk you through this process. As long as you are a paying member of Interact, we'll help you out with this. So there is my quiz inside of the builder. I you know, put my color scheme on it. I added images. Here's what my questions look like. These are just the questions from here. So there we go. My outcome is done. Looks pretty solid. Um, Gives me everything I need, including the opt-in form if you're choosing to use this for leads. Cool. Here's what it looks like inside of Interact. 
Here's the result correlations that I was talking about from the quiz. It gives you all of this. I didn't change any of that. Here's what the results look like. I just added images. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then here's what it looks like. What is your biggest strength? Take quiz. And I shortened this down to six questions. It was originally seven. So really cool quiz that I would enjoy taking. It's a good litmus test. Like take the quiz. If you don't like taking the quiz, then probably other people are not going to like taking the quiz either. Uh, if I want to turn on lead gen for this, I can. I just pop that on, go first name. I take that opt-in form, copy from the builder here, ready to unlock your biggest strength. And join our email list and get personalized tips on how to use your strength to your advantage. I'll change the button color to be my purple. And I always, always, always recommend enabling GDPR compliance, putting your terms of use. I agree to the terms use and privacy. Why privacy policy? I'll come back and add those links later. Save and continue connect with whatever you want so that you can segment your leads. This is really, really cool. Uh, I have HubSpot connected, so I'm gonna do HubSpot and put people onto different lists and segments and tags, depending on which system you use. So you yeah, add the contact list, each outcome can go to a different list. Very, very cool. Publish this when you're done. And that is the best prompt that I have so far. Like I said, uh, use this about a thousand times use it for a hundred clients, really, really high success rate. I haven't had a client say that they don't like the output after iteration sometimes. Uh, and like I said, these quizzes that are coming out are really solid, really, really uh, just good quizzes. And you can use this exact, exact prompt. I will put the uh, playground link so you can just copy it into your playground and then change the elements, you can go back through and watch the video uh, to go through which elements need to be changed. To customize this, make sure it writes in your own voice. And again, if you want us to do it for you, go to ai.trainerect.com and just submit that form.